Hi, it's Morgan and welcome to the Dove's Nest. In today's video, I am decluttering our playroom. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and I am a self-admitted hot mess mom. I'm currently in the process of trying to establish habits and routines so that I can keep my house and my life a little bit neater. But before I can do all of that, I have embarked on a huge, massive, extreme home declutter and today I'm actually wrapping up the first portion of that series by doing the room I have been dreading the most our playroom. I originally started my declutter series back in February of this year and I continued to work through the month and I was hoping to wrap it up by doing the playroom. I was excited because there are a few hours each week where both of my kids are at school and so I thought that would be the perfect time to declutter this playroom because if you have kids you know that decluttering and throwing away toys and organizing anything is borderline impossible when your kids are there, right? They just dig through the trash bag and pull everything you threw away out and they cry that it's their favorite toy and we can't get rid of it. And before you know it, there's the mess again. Our playroom has always been a source of contention, like since we moved in this house. <laughs> No matter how clean I try to keep it or how organized or how we try to have a toy rotation going, all of the tips and tricks that everyone says are required to keep an organized play area, my kids just don't seem to care. <laughs> they find where we hide the toys that aren't currently in rotation and even the toys that they have to play with, they always go and they pull the bins off of the shelves and then they just dump everything and they don't even play with it. It's like that's their play is to just dump everything. I last cleaned and purged our playroom in the spring of 2019 and about three days after I did it and got it looking so pretty, we had friends over for dinner and all of the kids seemed to not only tear apart the playroom and they pulled all the toys off the shelves and just dumped everything. They also got into my top school closet, which I recently decluttered. I'll put a link to that video here. Pulled everything out, dumped it on the playroom floor. They managed to find where we hide the toys that we're not keeping in our playroom on a rotation. Sometimes I swap things out. They managed to find those toys hiding in our laundry room closet. I'll put that declutter video up here as well. And they brought everything in the playroom or downstairs in the hall. And I mean, our house was trashed. It was trashed. And then maybe a week later, before I got a chance to really go in and clean it all up again, our house flooded. And I talk all about that in this video, which I will link up here. So everything has sort of been in boxes or garbage bags. You know, the people that came and cleaned up after the flood kind of just scooped up everything and either boxed it up or put it in a giant garbage bag. And then we've been in a remodel since spring of 2019. We finished the remodel just after Christmas of 2019 and the playroom is just the room I have not been able to get to. I literally have anxiety anytime I go in there because it's always such a mess. There's chaos. The problem is, is right now because we have this worldwide pandemic and we are schooling at home, all of my supplies are in that playroom just in clumps of junk. Um, the bookshelves are completely disorganized. You know, the workers, they pulled everything off the shelves and they were really sweet to at least put books back on the shelf, but there's no organization, no structure. Half the books didn't make it back on the shelf. The play toys are mixed in with all of my educational resources. And so if I need, you know, um, Unifix cubes, I can't find them because I have no idea where they are. They're somewhere in the big pile of crap. My husband did help me kind of get started with this project and at least allow me to feel like I can walk in that room by just taking a giant push broom and sweeping everything into one section of the room. So that helps and that's why it kind of doesn't look as bad as it is when we go in there and I show you. Um, so I don't know how many parts this video is going to be. I'm hoping I can get this done in three parts. So three days worth of work. <laughs> I'm hoping for a sorting, an organizing of the toys, and an organizing of the bookshelves. Now, my plan for today is the sorting phase. And what I wanna do is I wanna go in and do an initial sweep and sort of throw away any trash that I can immediately see. We have a lot of leftover construction trash, um, 
you know, boxes and papers that were left over from when we were taking everything out for our remodel. Sometimes my kids eat snacks or drink drinks and they just leave the trash, even though we have a giant trash can right there for them to use. They just don't see it. So I'm gonna go through and sweep and then sort of get the trash out. I'm planning next to sort of take the big toys out of the pile. You know, my daughter got like a frozen vanity for her birthday. We have a little kid's table. Just some of those larger toy items. I'm gonna move to another section of the room. And then after that, I'm really just gonna go through and sort. And I'm gonna try to separate out educational toys and then play toys and then broken toys and trash. <laughs> and so that's my plan for today. This is gonna be a huge project. I'm already overwhelmed. As I mentioned, I did it last year and it took my husband, me, and my mother-in-law two days to go through and clean and organize our playroom. I'm really hoping to make a ton of progress uh, this time around on this declutter and organize the playroom. Once I get everything sort of categorized into piles, I can obviously take the trash and take the toys out and then really focus my attention on clearing out the educational toys for now. Maybe I'll just move all of those into my office. And then with the toys that we're keeping, I really wanna go through and purge at least 50% of everything that we have. There are very few toys that my kids actually play with that we have. My son is actually not huge into toys. He likes his Transformers, he likes his Power Rangers, occasionally he'll play with a Matchbox car, but that's pretty much it. He's not a big toy kid. My daughter, however, loves to play, like imaginative play, with little character dolls and Barbies, and so I'd like to keep all of those. However, something interesting that's been happening is she has so many character dolls, um, little people or the PJ Masks play sets or you know the Anna and Elsa every figurine possible, but her favorite thing to do lately is to go into our pantry and she uses my bottled goods as dolls. <laughs> so, you know, the honey has its own name and the olive oil has its name. And, you know, when she sees us cooking with those things when we're making, you know, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, she gets really upset that we took the dolls out of their beds and that we're playing with them. And so I think I can even make some progress purging those in a later video. And then the third step of my, my whole declutter phase that I'm hoping to get to once I sort and then go through the toys is to do the bookshelf and um, I really want to get that clean and organized and then put back in my crazy OCD way how it was before. That's my plan. I'm sorry to take so long getting into this video, but um, I think I'm caffeinated. I've had a minute to breathe and I think I'm ready to go and start this declutter project. So if you're ready, let's go. I'm gonna grab a big giant garbage bag and then I'm gonna grab a box or a laundry bin or something to sort of separate out the educational materials. Um, and then the toys I'm just gonna keep in a giant pile or maybe start sorting them into individual toy bins. So let's go do this. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've got a giant hefty outdoor size garbage bags. I'm gonna do one sweep where I sort of go through and take out any obvious trash I can find. And then I also have a laundry basket. I've got another one on standby. And I'm going to sort of um, sort our educational activities into these baskets. I have lots of, you probably can't see. <laughs> I have our fresh hole bins that we usually keep our toys in and so sort of as I stumble upon those, I will be sorting the toys that we are keeping into those. And then if I run out, I also have lots of these little Dollar Tree bins that I will be using for toys that we're keeping. So let's go. <laughs> All right, so first in this living area, I'm just trying to pick up everything off the floor. We have an entire basket of blankets that we use when we have family movie night or that my kids use when they're in here and they can snuggle with, but I'm watching them. So I've noticed they've grabbed a lot of blankets out of our linen closet and brought them into the movie room. So I'm just sort of picking this stuff up. Like I mentioned, my husband had swept everything into a giant pile um, on the other side of the playroom and my kids have like broken into that pile, obviously, <laughs> and moved everything into the clean space because everyone wants to be in a clean space, but nobody wants to clean the space. So I just grabbed the push broom and I'm pushing everything back into that pile. Hey. 
Next, I'm just clearing some space off of these couches and folding these blankets back up. I also have these two crib sheets here and the crib sheets are for Legos. You guys, I am not a Lego mom. I am not a small toy mom. I am not a toy with a lot of pieces mom. And so the crib sheets, my kids are only allowed to play with Legos if they play with them on the crib sheets because that way it's just easy cleanup. You just kind of fold up the crib sheet all the Legos fall to the center and then they can put them back in their little Lego boxes. So what I'm doing here is I've changed my game plan multiple times, which basically means I don't have a plan. <laughs> so what I decided to do first was just to find all of the storage containers or toy bins in the pile and pull them out and empty them. So I'm literally finding bins, dumping everything that's in them into this giant pile, and then keeping the bins off to the side so that as I decide, yes, we're gonna keep this toy, um, I can just put it in a bin and fill up the bins that way. I'm also removing any giant toys and moving them to the side of the room. Right here you can see I just have a moment of overwhelm because let's face it, who wants to clean this room? Do you see why I say it gives me anxiety to be in here? <laughs> it was pretty bad. So again, I'm just pulling out the containers. Those two giant boxes against the back wall were actually boxes with all of our taught school educational activities in them. So I just, rather than unpack those boxes, moved them to the other side of the room. And as I find more obvious educational stuff, like if it's laying right on top or if it's another box full of educational toys, I'm just grabbing that and bringing it over to that side of the room so that I don't have to dump everything and then repack it. It just makes it easier. So again, here we go with the educational activities and empty storage bins. Now, some of you might be wondering, like, how did your playroom get like this? And there really is like a good reason. My son doesn't really make a mess. He's a little bit OCD and mess sort of freaks him out. I mean, he would go in there if I asked him to and clean this mess because he just goes crazy about having a mess. My daughter, on the other hand, is like a little hurricane tornado and mess just follows her everywhere. So the toys can be a bit messy, mostly because of my daughter. However, my kids know they are not allowed to play in our tot school closet. Those are mom's toys is what we call them. And so all of the little pieces that you see me digging through while I'm cleaning up this room, like that kind of stuff is everywhere. And that was because we had friends over for dinner and their kids didn't know the rules or didn't listen to the rules and tore apart not only our playroom, but the tot school closet as well, which is why all of our educational activities are mixed in together with the regular toys instead of being sorted separately. When our house flooded, we did have a professional cleaning company come and they boxed everything up or put it into garbage bags. And then when our remodel was finished, they came and they unpacked us. They unpacked us as well as they could because they label the boxes with the location that they pulled those items from. And when we remodeled, we got rid of a lot of those original cabinets and cupboards and storage places. And so they didn't have anywhere to put them back. And so rather than put them back, they just dumped everything out on the floor. It was so, so upsetting. <laughs> we actually complained and left a really bad review online about it. But that's sort of how everything got back on the floor instead of staying in those moving boxes like they were during our remodel. What I've done is I've sort of gone through and I've separated out the obvious empty storage bins and then the obvious educational activities and I'll show you those right now. So over here I have about five bags of trash already started. None of them are filled. And then right here I have like all of these empty storage bins that I can use to put the toys that we're keeping and then these are all boxes and bins of the obvious educational toys or school supplies or school activities that we do when we homeschool. And then this is what we're left with. So I'm actually going to change up my plan. As I mentioned, I'm gonna change up the game plan a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take a laundry basket that's empty and I'm gonna sort of go through here and just put any books I can find. Sort of get the books out of the way and then I'm probably gonna start at this end and work my way through. I'm gonna have a bin for toys, a bin for educational, and a bag of trash, and just go through and sort everything as needed. Wish me luck. 
Again, I did sort of stick to my game plan. I took this laundry basket and I went through that entire like two foot high pile and I pulled out as many books as I could find and put them in that laundry basket. Like I mentioned, um, during our remodel, most of the books were left on the shelves, but then when the painters came um, to repaint the room, it was like kind of a taupe gray color before, so they painted it a brighter white. And then we also had the baseboards redone. And so when they did those things, they had to pull the bookshelves away from the wall and they took all of the books off of the shelves. Most of them made it back on the shelves, but a lot of them didn't. They ended up in those garbage bags uh, with toys. And so that's kind of why there's toys mixed into all of these things. Uh, my daughter, you will notice in this video, makes a bunch of appearances. <laughs> As I mentioned, moms, you know that whenever you try to clean something and your kids see you cleaning it or purging, all of a sudden that's their favorite toy and they have to play with it. She was pretty good. I kept telling her she's not allowed to play with the toys until I'm done cleaning them, but the Peppa Pig toys are her favorite. And so anytime she saw a Peppa Pig toy, she had to play with it. Now keep in mind, when our house flooded last spring and all of the toys were boxed up, they stayed that way until our remodel was finished in like January. Um, and so my kids went for almost an entire year without having any toys to play with. <laughs> And then, you know, at Christmas time, they got a few toys from grandparents and things, but they haven't had their toys to play with for almost a year. And so now that like we're purging and cleaning out old toys and, you know, organizing the toys that we do have, it's almost like a brand new playroom with toys they've never played with before. So they are really excited to have these toys, but um, that's why she's in here. It's kind of just new toy central. I also did want to share this fun little fact with you. My husband and I have never purchased toys for our kids until Christmas of 2019. So just this past Christmas and birthdays. I mean, my kids' birthdays, you know, are in winter. And so everything's kind of right around Christmas, but they each got one toy from us for their birthday and five toys from us for Christmas. And those are the only toys we have ever bought our kids. Uh, most of these toys were donated you know, friends who have kids that grow up and grow out of them, they gift us their toys because they know we have the room for it. We have four sets of grandparents, both mine and my husband's parents are divorced and remarried. And so we've got four sets of grandparents. Um, and then we have a ton of friends and like kids' birthday parties are not a big deal to me, but to all of our friends, they're huge. And so you know, we might have a birthday party for my kids and everybody comes with like loads and loads of toys. My son's fifth birthday, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. Everyone he invited came to his birthday party. So he had maybe 30 to 35 kids at his birthday party and they all brought toys. And so he like cleaned house, but I wanted to make that disclaimer that even baby toys and infant toys, we've never bought our kids because they were gifted to us. And so I don't feel bad throwing a lot of this stuff away and I know I'm gonna get comments. Why didn't you donate these toys? Why are you just throwing them away? And to be honest, there's two reasons. The first is most of them are broken. I mean, they've been sitting on the floor in a giant pile for at least a month. And so a lot of them have broken. Secondly, and this is so bad to say, <laughs> I didn't buy them and so my feelings aren't hurt that we're throwing them away because at this point, you know, I'm trying to follow the fly lady system. And at this point in the game, I'm in crisis mode. I don't have time to recycle. You know, when um, the fly lady does her chaos cleaning, that's the big thing is you're just trying to tidy and clean and everything that does not have a place or that you don't know, maybe I should donate it, maybe I th should throw it away. It just goes in the trash, right? We're not in a, oh, I'm gonna recycle and give this to somebody mode. It's a crisis mode. And so that's why we just threw everything away, mostly because it was broken. And secondly, because that would have been something else I would have had to sort through to decide you know trash or recycle trash or recycle and so we're just judge me all you want but we're just dumping it once I got the books in the bin I sort of decided to just stay on that side of the room and 
start sorting the toys from there. So I have one bin for toys we're keeping, I have one bin for educational toys, and then I have a third bin that's for our wooden train set. I don't even remember where we got the wooden train set, but we got it maybe one or two Christmases ago from someone, it was gifted to us, and my kids have literally never touched it. The only time they touch that train bin is to dump everything out. And it's not just the train tracks, it's train tracks, it's trains, there's like little wooden people and little itty bitty wooden trees. And so it's just one of those things where I spend so much time of my life cleaning up the toys that I don't want to do it anymore. So I actually put it up, you know, for offer. We're not selling it. I'm just giving it away. And it was gone within five minutes. One of our friends snagged it up. So Okay, I'm officially calling it quits for today. I've been organizing, trashing, decluttering for about two hours. It's dinner time, I've gotta go make dinner for my family. Um, I feel like I didn't get very far. Let me show you sort of what I accomplished on day one. I will come back tomorrow and hopefully finish. If I start earlier in the day, have a longer period of time to work, obviously, um, so I'll probably get more done, but I didn't start until about 3.30 today, so. Here's what I got done. So I still have some empty bins over here. We have our educational activities stacked over here. <laughs> I got through one giant bag of trash so far. Um, and actually this is all trash as well. This is what I still have to do. Do you see why I was so overwhelmed? Um, and then I've started more piles. This is educational stuff, toys that I need to sort through and organize. I'm not sure if we're keeping them yet. And I've got another bag of garbage started. And then this is that wooden train. Everybody has a wooden train set and my kids have literally never played with ours. And so we are going to find a new home for it. So I've gotten through about a quarter of the pile. Most of that is stuff I need to sweep up. It's like, do you see it's like party confetti, like that brown Easter basket filler or something? I have no idea where it came from, but it needs to just all be cleaned up. It came from the Easter bunny, thank you. All right, so we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, so we are back to cleaning for day two. Like I said, you guys, I thought this whole playroom project was gonna take me two, maybe three days to get through everything. <laughs> I haven't even finished sorting the mess in two days um you could see my husband's in here working i didn't realize he was even in here i was so in the zone um when i was filming i don't even notice like the door's wide open and he's in there working we put automatic sensor lights in that closet and for some reason this one never turns off and so i think he was in there that day fixing it trying to see why it doesn't shut off it's supposed to turn off after a minute or so when you walk in, you know, it senses the motion and it turns on and then a minute of no movement, it's supposed to turn off and it doesn't. So he's in there working on that while I'm filming. I wanted to mention, I get a lot of comments on these videos asking why my husband and my kids don't help me clean. And I hope this video sort of shows that like they do. <laughs> so my husband, works a full-time job, obviously, but he commutes an hour and a half way, both ways to work. So an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half home. So he's not ever home during the week. I mean, until dinner time, we don't see him. And by then he's had such a long day that like he can just rest. And that's fine with me because I'm home all day with not a whole lot to do. Um, but when he is home on the weekends, he does chores all day he's not one of those people where it's saturday and he wants to rest i'm that kind of person like it's saturday i'm not doing anything today he is like up at the crack of dawn wants everybody else to be up at the crack of dawn and work with him but he does a lot of our home improvement projects he's really really handy um, and then he does everything on the outside we have quite a bit of land and so he keeps up with our landscaping and you know broken sprinklers and lights and so on this particular day when i was doing the playroom 
when we bought this house, we have a pool and it's got this retaining wall all around the pool and there's lights inside of the retaining wall, but they've never worked. And so on this particular day, he was out there rewiring the lights, like drilling holes into the wall and rewiring the lights so that those lights would work and we could do some night swimming this summer. So he does do all kinds of stuff, but the basic housekeeping he doesn't do because he's not home and I am, and I don't have anything to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm not working outside of the home anymore. And so when my kids, you know, could go to school, I would just be sitting at home with nothing to do. So I clean and it's not a big deal. Like, you know, we both contribute to the upkeep of our home and family, but we contribute in different ways. And that, that works for us. That may not work for some people. I, you know, I have friends who are stay at home moms and they don't cook and they don't clean. Their husbands do, even though they're at work all day. And so just do what works for your family and that's fine. But anyway, that's kind of where my husband is. My kids just turned three and just turned five. And so they have chores but they're age appropriate chores i mean my kids are not going to go in and like declutter their playroom or their bedroom closets or anything else in the house i actually have a video coming sometime later this summer that talks about all about my kids um, chores and our chore system and the things that they have to do every day a lot of it is not necessarily chores it's just their routines like what I expect from them like every day I expect you to wake up and make your bed you know they're three and five and they do it um, they help unload and load the dishwasher they feed our pet they are responsible for cleaning up their bedrooms and their clothes and their toys and so they have age-appropriate chores so if they're not helping me you know upkeep the fly lady system it's fine I don't expect them too. So I wanted to answer that question here, but I'll probably make a separate video about all of that as well. And I'm still going through and you can see like all of this crap on the floor. It's those little pieces, um, mom's toys, you know, the magnetic letters and the little itty bitty educational toys for my kids toys. <laughs> if somebody gifts them something that's small or that's small and has a lot of pieces unless it's something very specific that they want for example if my daughter wanted a peppa pig playhouse and the little characters are small that's fine but if people give us toys that have small pieces or a lot of pieces i automatically get rid of them because i don't want to clean it up <laughs> so most of these itty bitty pieces are educational toys and puzzle pieces and things and so i have to sort through all of those there's also that weird brown crinkle paper Easter basket or packing filler. I have no idea where it came from, but it was covering the floor of our playroom. Like most of our downstairs has this brown paper all over it. And I don't know where it came from or why it's there, but it was obnoxious. I think I mentioned also in a previous video that we had a jar of those Orbeez, those water beads and they weren't hydrated. So they're about the size of a sesame seed or yeah, like about the size of a sesame seed, probably maybe smaller, maybe more like a poppy seed. And I want to say it was like a two quart jar. So it was huge. And my daughter found it because it was in this pile of mess. I had it in my educational stuff, but it got mixed in with this pile of mess. And anyway, my daughter found it and unscrewed the lid. And so you can see every time I start to stand up or anytime my daughter walks in or something, we're brushing off our feet. <laughs> it's because there's all those teeny tiny desaturated Orbeez beads all over the floor. And you can probably see them in the video. They're bright red. They are scattered all over the playroom floor. They were all over our downstairs. They're in our guest bedroom, like embedded in the carpet. I've probably vacuumed 30 times and they are still everywhere so one of the first things i'm going to do once all of this is clean is just really go in and vacuum super super well and hopefully get rid of all those dang orbeez <laughs> because they just make my life so miserable i have also gotten comments from people asking why i didn't ask a friend or a family member for help in our declutter project because with me being pregnant, I probably shouldn't be doing all this, especially because it is a higher risk pregnancy with my placenta previa and preeclampsia. The biggest reason is you guys, I'm a control freak. <laughs> so I mentioned at the beginning of this video that last spring when we cleaned, my mother-in-law and my husband helped me. And 
it ended up creating more work for me. So I have purchased all of our educational toys, not the play toys. I've never purchased really play toys, as I mentioned, until this winter for our kids. But all of the educational activities and toys I purchased myself. And so I know what those look like. And I know what set goes with what. And, you know, my husband and my mother-in-law came in and they just started throwing away everything. You know, they might see a puzzle piece, but they're like, it doesn't really look like a puzzle. What is it? A really good example is um, Lakeshore Learning has, it's like a muffin tin toy. And it comes with different colors, muffins. And it's a sorting toy. These itty bitty plastic muffins that are like the size of a quarter. And you sort by color, you can sort by number. And anyway, so they come in and they threw away all the muffins. And I was like, you guys, that's like a $40 toy. And you just threw away all the pieces because you don't know that it goes to something. Do you know what I mean? And so I ended up after <laughs> last spring, after that cleaning session was done, my husband didn't take the trash bag out. He just left it in the playroom. And I had to go through all of the trash and pull out the things that actually weren't trash and then reorganize those things. Things like um, we had a whole box of like Play-Doh alphabet stamps and they just saw these little chintzy plastic, like it's not even a full letter. It's like an outline of a letter, you know, the letter B, what is this? So they'd throw it away. And I'm like, that goes to the Play-Doh set. Like, why are we throwing it away? It's a full set and now it's missing like five letters because you threw it away, but I didn't throw any of them away. And it was this whole giant mess and the control freak in me couldn't let it go. And so, like I said, I was digging through the trash, pulling out all of the pieces that shouldn't have been thrown away. <laughs> So that's why I don't ask people for help um, for projects like this, because in the end, it creates more work for me. And I'd rather just go in. I've got my YouTube videos playing on the TV. You know, I have a whole playlist that I was a watch later playlist that I was watching. And so I just turn on my YouTube videos and I do my cleaning and I'm fine. I'm fine with it. If it takes a couple hours, great. I'm fine. I don't mind it once I get going. It's the getting going part. That was hard. But um but I did want to mention, that's why I don't ask people for help. I didn't ask my mother-in-law. I didn't ask a friend. Um, that's the main reason. The other reason was because we also are quarantined. <laughs> Nobody's allowed to come over and help me anyway. Um, but that's why I'm not having my kids or my husband help either. Because I just feel like it would cause more problems than it would solve. Also, I did want to mention, you're probably noticing that I'm not sorting everything just in trash toys, educational toys. Um, I'm creating other piles sort of behind me in the corner and up on top of the bookshelf. And I do this. It's kind of like I'm sorting generally in those three categories, but then I start subsorting as well because I can't help it. So I have like a dress ups pile. I have a stuffed animals pile. I have um, on top of the bookshelf, I think there was things that don't belong in the playroom and inflatable toys that maybe we can use out at the pool, um, that sort of thing. So I was creating sub piles as well. Also leave me a comment down below and tell me what's the biggest mess that you've ever had to clean up. <laughs> Our playroom would get pretty bad. As I said, I only come in here and actually really like purge and organize toys and give it a deep clean like twice a year or so for the last three years. Um, but this is the worst. It's literally the worst it's ever ever been so it's taking forever but i want to know what's the worst mess that you've ever had to clean was it your home was it somebody else's was it like your office <laughs> i remember my mom uh when she started working at a new office one time one of the first things they asked her to do was to go through and clean the office storage room and she was like uh first of all that's way below my pay grade that's not what i was hired for and it wasn't but I just remember she would call me and it took her weeks and weeks to organize this storage room of files. And um, she just says that was by far the worst mess that she's ever had to clean. So let me know, what's the worst mess you've ever had to clean? Does it look like mine? <laughs> was it worse than mine? I would be shocked unless you've been featured on an episode of Hoarders, which I'm sad to say I never have been. <laughs> and after you see this playroom, I'm sure you won't believe me. But um, this is by far the worst mess I've ever had to clean up. It took probably 
eight hours between two days. I think I filmed eight hours worth of cleaning. Uh, two hours the first day and six hours on day two just to sort. You guys, that's just to sort. I had eight hours of footage to create this video. I was able to get it down to about 45 minutes. And so, you know, that's still a really, really long video. <laughs> but I did have a comment one time, um, actually not too long ago, I forget which video, but somebody left me a comment asking if I would do one of these declutter and organize videos, but not speed them up and just show everything in real time and show like more up close and detail what I'm doing and how I'm sorting. And the answer is no, like I will never do that because that would be, I mean, it would be longer than like the Titanic. <laughs> this was eight hours of footage. And while I didn't cut much out, um, I did cut out every time I like had to go to the bathroom or every time somebody came in and started talking to me or when I had to go get my kids snacks or get them dressed or whatever, white bums. All right, this is my progress for today. Sorry, I've got my Invisalign in, so I talk a little bit funny. Um, I've got two giant bags. They're about as tall as me. They go up to my shoulders of trash. Um, a chair, some box of miscellaneous things. I just offered this up on our church's website to give away these wooden trains. You guys, that's a whole 13 by 13 cube of Melissa and Doug wooden train set that my kids have never played with. I need to sweep this up. You can see at least everything is off the floor. Um, and then I just placed an order on Target to get some more bins, but I'm gonna get white ones so that we can stagger the white and the navy blue on the first two shelves. And then down below, I'll keep it open for some of these bigger cars and toys. But um, like I said, I kind of went through and pulled out broken pieces or things that I knew my kids didn't play with and put those in the trash bags. And then everything else we're keeping, most of this stuff is stuffed animals and dress ups. Okay, so along with some extra storage bins for our toy shelf, I also purchased a piece of furniture that I'm going to transform into a dress-ups wardrobe for all of my daughter's princess costumes. So I will film a tutorial on it. Stay tuned if that's something you're interested in seeing. And as we move over this way, this is all of our homeschool educational activities and stuff. <laughs> So, in my next videos, as far as this playroom declutter goes, I'm gonna start sorting through all of this stuff and getting it reorganized. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it though because we have transformed this hallway closet into mostly a pool towel closet. Um, and then we are going to, once those bins arrive, we're gonna start sorting through the toys and get them organized. And then we have to conquer the books, the library. I don't have a formal closing to this video. It's been a long day, it's been a sweaty day. I'm ready to go sit down and relax. Baby is annoyed that I've been spending all day sort of crawling around on the floor. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more decluttering, purging, housekeeping type of videos, subscribe to my channel. In the next couple of days, once those storage bins arrive, I'm gonna go through this massive toy pile and start to categorize and organize each type of toy into its own bin. And I'm also gonna be making some iron-on vinyl labels to put on those bins, giant pictures so my kids don't have to know how to read, but they can just look at the bin, see what's in it, and that way they're not dumping everything out to try to find one toy. I'm also going to be going through all of our homeschool and educational toys over there on the other side of the room and getting them organized. And then I have to find a spot for those things because we have transformed our hall closet into a pool towel closet. And the last thing we're gonna be doing is we're going to be cleaning up and organizing our books. I have noticed that over the last year or so, we've gathered a lot of twaddle. <laughs> it's either been donated to us or just those little cheapy Dollar Tree type of books that we're not gonna use. So I'll be purging a bunch of those books as well organizing them, getting my shelves put back together, and then our playroom is going to be awesome. So again, if you're interested in seeing all of that stuff, be sure to click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I know this video was long. They're really hard to kind of sit through, so I try to talk and do the voiceovers through them. 
because I can't just sit there and watch somebody sort through crap or clean for hours and hours. But in the last two days, we've probably spent about eight hours filming. So I hope I was able to cut this down short enough to keep your attention. And as always, I will see you in my next video. In today's video, I can't talk with these things in. <laughs> Hang on one second.